please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of uh, uh, Mid Cap Radar. I'm Prashant Nair. With me is my colleague Anisha Jain. And it's getting a bit more interesting uh, compared to what we had the first couple of hours of trade. I mean, under 10 point change is what we had. Uh, for a while, the market then sold off. And from the lows, now we have recovered quite a bit. I mean, the low was, uh, I think, about 10,710 or so. We've recovered about 50, 55 points from those levels. And now the Nifty actually is at the day's highest point. Uh, I mean, practically at the day's highest point. Uh, so this is uh, not a bad looking screen at all, uh, which also means that the weekly tally has gotten a little better. I mean, uh, for the week, uh, we were looking, we were sort of uh, going to end towards a, a three quarters of a percent cut. Now that's under a half a percent cut for the week. I'm talking about the Nifty Friday, Friday, depending on, of course, how the close uh, today finally pans out. But for now, the recovery uh, is underway and you can see it on mid caps, you can see it on the bank nifty uh, and uh, across sectors as well. Anish Afnan. Well, yes, uh, good afternoon, Prashant. Well, as you mentioned, the bank nifty has made a solid recovery, almost 190 points from the day's low. And the mid cap index, well, up around 100% from the day's low. So a lot of uh, things to talk about when it comes to the market. But first up, the top headlines. Market recovers from lows. Heavyweights ITC, HDFC pull the nifty higher, while Reliance Industries remains the biggest drag. Mid cap index and nifty bank marginally higher. Oil companies in focus ahead of the OPEC decision on a supply policy. The Saudi Arabia pushes for an output hike while Iran continues to oppose the move. The IDBA bank stock loses ground. LIC is understood to be in talks with the government to pick up significant minority stake in the bank. Bharat for chairman Baba Kalyani reports an improved situation. As most companies are running at full capacity, it is lined up a 400 crore expansion at the Baramati plant. VIP's newly appointed CEO, Sudeep Ghosh, sounds optimistic about the future. Tell CNBC TV18 that he targets revenue of 2,000 crore rupees by 2020. Expects Bottom to expand 500 crores in the next five years. All right, so those are the headlines. Uh, we'll spend some time on uh, a few of those uh, stories in a bit, but let's get in Sudeep Bhagle, uh, who's with us at the top of the hour to run us through some trades and uh, what he would like to do. Uh, Sandeep, we were just talking about the recovery in the Nif Nifty, I guess, led uh, in a large degree by the Bank Nifty. Uh, what would you make of it? Would you think it will last, become bigger? Good afternoon, Prashant. I think Bank Nifty is definitely showing spend, uh, uh, at least another 150, 200 points higher is what I expect the Bank Nifty to go. And Nifty should see a 50, 70 point uh, up move from the current levels. Okay, uh, so that was about the Nifty and Nifty Bank, but what are your stock picks at this hour? I have a buy in a Reliance Capital, stop loss of 414, target 438, and a sell in a Torrent Power, stop loss of 239, target 216. Uh, uh, fair enough. I mean, so, sorry, you said 50 odd points more on the Nifty, you were talking about the Nifty, uh, Sandeep? 50, 70 points more on the Nifty. I see Nifty testing 10,820 or so, and Bank Nifty would be around 120 to 150 points. Okay, 120, 150 on Bank Nifty. Uh, just a couple of names. J uh, just look up uh, Jet Airways. It's up about 4%. I mean, if you have a view on uh, Interglobe, it's had a, quite a week uh, with uh, big swings. Uh, these two names. Well, bounce back for certain. Uh, Jet has come out of ban after a long time. Likely that there ca can be some more upsides, but I still don't have that conviction. This bounce back move can take it to four five four zero five four one zero. Nothing beyond that. Hmm. Do you track uh, uh, Sandeep uh, oil uh, by itself as a commodity? Oh, no, no, I don't track oil. Uh, the crude, you mean the crude this thing, crude oil, right? W Brent, yes. No, you don't. Okay. No, I, I don't track, track those levels. Okay. But uh, view on BPCL, HPCL, uh, that is, uh, I mean, I am bullish on the oil marketing stocks per se. And I see BPCL would be an outperformer currently at 424. I would talk of a move towards 440, 445, talk of the next couple of days. Okay, if you're bullish on oil marketing, then you're bearish on oil prices. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, automatically must uh, follow. Sandeep, thanks very much. I appreciate you joining in with those uh, trades, those two trades from Sandeep. He expects about a 50-odd point bounce on the Nifty and a 120-150-odd point bounce on the Bank Nifty. 
and it likes oil marketing companies for some upside. Anisha. Okay, let's get in some market opinion on that note. Then we speak to big bull Rakesh Junjunwala to get his sense of the markets and the key triggers going ahead. Hear him out. Markets have had a tremendous rise. I think we bottomed in August 2013 around 5200 or 4800. Mm. And you had the Nifty go to about 11,000, 11,300. I think we are now correcting. And if you look at the long rise that we have had, it's a very, very, st I would say it's a very poor correction. Mm. Right? And I, for one, believe that, you know, bull markets cannot end at this level of GDP to profits. Mm. This level of profits to GDP. The flow of local money into markets I think it's just the beginning. Abhi to khali trailer hai. And I don't think this flow is going to stop. Mm. The index may have lost maybe 10% or 7, 8%, but there has been tremendous correction in the mid-cap stocks, yeah. right? I don't think that political uncertainty is going to let these markets go down beyond a point. I personally feel it is too early to predict an election, which is going to take place 11 months hence. Right. And see, it's in the history of all democracies, bipoles by and large always go against the ruling party. So I think too much is being made of the fact that the BJP has lost the bipoles. The fact remains that Mr. Modi is the most towering leader the country has today. And I think in a range of one to ten, if he is nine, the second person is three. Hmm. So you will fight these central elections on the basis of an electable prime minister. I don't think the Congress or the opposition has got a credible has got a credible leader as a prime minister. Hmm. Having said that, the fact is that the BJP did extremely well in the Hindi cow belt. Hmm. To repeat that kind of performance may be difficult. But I am pretty sure myself in all my calculations that the next government is going to be a BJP government. Okay, uh, those are pretty uh, confident words from uh, Rakesh Junjunwala. Uh, we'll take a very quick break, by the way. Uh, 18 points on the Nifty, so it's not as if it's running away or the recovery uh, is becoming bigger by uh, the second, uh, but it's, uh, it's looking much better than the first half, most definitely. We take a very quick break. Uh, up, up next, we speak with the management at uh, Soam Distilleries. Uh, the, stocks, uh, the stock has done very well, both recently and over the last one year, uh, and uh, they've got approval for uh, essentially capacity expansion. Uh, we speak with Mr. J.K. Arora, chairman of the company, in just a bit. Thank you watching Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Well, as far as the Nifty is concerned, and took up around 20 points. The bank Nifty, which was charging ahead uh, uh, earlier, is now down about 20 or 30 points from the day's high. So still looking good for the markets. Some of the stocks that are moving higher, well, SBI sadly saw an up move of around 1%. Uh, that one is holding up higher. ICICI Bank has had a good week itself. And Midcap Space, that one is doing around the flat line, just around 10% higher on that one. But let's focus on one Midcap company then. Uh, so the salaries is on our radar after the company received an approval to manufacture IMFL at the subsidiary in Karnataka. But the commercial production there is expected to commence within the next month. J.K. Arora, the chairman of the company, joins us now. Mr. Arora, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. First up, tell us uh, with this new addition what it takes your total capacity at and what could be the revenue contribution from this new facility? Yeah, <laughs> this uh, the production of IMFL from next month uh, we had essential turnover in the, in the company, and uh, presently we are going to pr produce about one lakh cases from July, July 
and then we'll take it to the 2.5 lakh cases by the end of this financial year. Okay, sir. Fifteen years ago, when we had a word with you, you have mentioned that there are a couple of uh, Hong Kong investors that have provided their letter of intent to invest in the company. What is the update regarding that? And you were also telling us about an acquisition in the pipeline of around 80 crores. Could you give us an update about that, sir? Yeah, that Hong Kong investors are absolutely in place. This, they, we have already uh, received the letter of intent, and the subscription agreement has been signed, and uh, it is. It is going to place uh, on 29th on EGM. Once it is cleared from the EGM, then uh, I think uh, we hope to uh, complete the transaction in the first week of July or so. And so, what about the acquisition that you were telling us about, sir? Yeah, that uh, acquisition is, uh, I think, by the similar time line. I think by that first week of July will also be. This will also come by the time. Hmm. Uh, sorry, who are the investors, Mr. Arora? Uh, just to go back to the uh, other question. Yeah. This is a Hong Kong-based company. This is a Cast Peak. It's a, the name of the investor, hmm. and they are investing about hundred crores uh, in the in the company. Hmm. Okay, just to uh, go back to the point, you said one lakh cases is going to be the total capacity now post this expansion. Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, this first the, we got the approval of manufacturing of IMFL hmm. uh, uh, recently last week, hmm. and we are going to start with this one lakh cases hmm. per month, hmm. and it's going to be the, by the by the end of financial year we will take it to the two point five lakh. Hmm. Out of this uh, same out of the same plant basically same unit. Same unit, same unit where we are already producing the beer. Uh -huh. uh, beer, uh, beer is uh, this thing already doing since last month, uh -huh. and IMFL will be added from uh, this coming uh, month from July. So mm. totally, this this uh, this two things together will add substantial turnover into the company. Top line, bottom line, both. Mm. Sir, so, uh, generally in terms of revenue contribution, uh, my understanding is that beer forms the majority of it. Now, with this IMFL, uh, you know, uh, capacity coming up, what could the breakup look like going forward? Normally, you know, normally, very interesting question. The present breakup is of our revenue. Uh, this thing is about twenty percent IMFL and eighty percent beer. Hmm. But uh, Karnataka, uh, Karnataka is a very big market for IMFL. It's like uh, I have, normally it is a beer is two times or three times uh, in the mm. states, but Karnataka is one of the rare states where the uh, IMFL is bigger than beer. And so, so what is the margin differential, yeah. sir, in between uh, beer and IMFL? Similar, it's almost okay. 14, 15 percent. What what uh, we are we are having presently the best. Karnataka is a very big market for IMFL. It's like uh, I have, normally it is a beer is two times or three times uh, in the mm. states, but Karnataka is one of the rare states where the uh, IMFL is bigger than beer. And so, so what is the margin differential, yeah. sir, in between uh, beer and IMFL? Similar, it's almost 14, 15 percent. What what uh, we are we are having presently the best margins in the industry. If you compare any any listed company like BIGO or the UB or the Jagajit or any company, our margins are uh, best, and this the NACTA margins are uh, again uh, good. So the the similar trend will be maintained, I believe. Mr. Rora, you were talking about that Karnataka market. What were you highlighting? You were saying it's 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 different in the sense that uh, the IMF. It is like like yeah. like if if I if I talk. Uh, Madhya Pradesh market, suppose uh -huh. it is a, uh, it is a suppose X is the IMFL, hmm. then two X is the BS. Uh, similarly, you talk any market, it is either if IMFL is X, so BS is two X or three X. Uh -huh. But uh, Karnataka is where the BS is X and IMFL is two X or two and a half X. It, okay. it is like this. That's 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 interesting. Mm. Uh, so, uh, it, uh, so it offers you scope to increase capacity more at some point in the future. I mean, uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. but it would need yes, yes. more investment to uh, to be able yes, to do that yes, once yes. you reach two yes. and a half lakh cases. 
yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. So if we achieve two and two and a half lakh cases, then it's a six crore cases market. So we we if, uh, we will have the thirty lakh cases. So it will be a what? It will not be a even uh, uh, what? It will not be even five percent. So we are definitely going to increase the um, uh, production capacity in the coming time. Aha, uh-huh. six crore cases essentially is the market uh, uh, in Karnataka. Yes. Correct. It is little more than six crores. And and your you'd you'd be about twenty lakh uh, after your expansion yearly yearly numbers, annual no, numbers. No, thirty, thirty. Thirty lakhs. 30, sorry, 30. thirty lakhs. Yes. By by uh-huh. the end of this financial year, we will we will face thirty lakhs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Arora, just mm-hmm. a last question from my side. You had earlier mentioned to us that you're looking at a revenue target of five hundred crores for the year. Now, with this capacity expansion, mm-hmm. is there a room for upside on that? No, no, no. It's not upside. It uh-huh. is the what projections we have given you. It's the same. Only thing is, this step will facilitate to achieve that turnover. Mr. Arora, uh, while uh, the potential is there, but you'll have to break into the market, right? I mean, the you, uh, it's a, it's a uh, uh, the heavily uh, competed market essentially. So, would you have to uh, drop prices? What what would you have to do to be able to grab no, more no, of the no. market? Yes. No, 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 no. We had already started selling from uh, by sending from Madhya Pradesh. Mm. So we had already made our place in that market. Mm. Only thing is, that when we started producing locally, mm. the profitability will go up. Mm. So we are already selling in that market. Mm. So it is not that. Uh, but you need to uh, so step up at distribution efforts, etc. Uh, one, one assumes, right? Yeah, yeah. Distribution is also already in place. Mm. It is actually interstate taxation in liquor. The mm. biggest, biggest bottleneck in for any company is is the interstate taxation. Mm. Okay. So that interstate taxation, uh, once we started there, so we have, we we could overcome the the taxation part, and now the profitability will go up by by producing locally. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Arora, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through uh, some of those details there. On, uh, and I, I surely learned a little bit about the Karnataka MSL market. Uh, is, is, he called it peculiar uh, because it's exactly the opposite of what some of the other large states uh, are looking like with respect to the share of IMFL versus beer. Uh, so that is some distilleries. And I said, uh, he definitely said that even after the expansion, uh, they'd have under 5% of the total share of the IMFL uh, sort of mm-hmm. annual uh, sort of. Uh, sales in the state of Karnataka and uh, they can easily and they would be looking forward to increasing it more. Uh, we'll take a very quick break. There is some uh, flash at the bottom of the screen. Company is not under any restricted uh, list. FIs can buy shares from open market. I mean, that would be pretty obvious to anybody uh, who checks up the uh, sort of exchange notifications, etc. Stock is spiking actually 2.5% higher. We will take a very quick break. Uh, we'll come back and maybe spend some more time on this on Ujjivan and a few other things. And of course, look at markets in more detail. 16 points in the Nifty. Take that break. Be right back. Okay, so 21 points now on the Nifty. Uh, so, I mean, not really making newer highs. When we began, we were at the day's high. We're just off it. Uh, so it's not uh, too much to really complain. And better showing as compared to the first few hours of trade. Well, time to hunt for value. Uh, and we're talking about the stock in the NBFC space today. Abhishek uh, is standing by uh, with uh, the name of the stock and, of course, a uh, 360-degree view on uh, what the business could look like and whether there is value. Abhishek, over to you. The stock has fallen 10% from its 52-week high that it hit on 27th April. However, the CV cycle is on an uptrend and Shiram Transport is the market leader in the organized sector of used CV financing. Why did the stock fall? The stock fell on fears that an increase in load factors for commercial vehicles may impact their overall sales. There are also concerns that uh, a move towards the IND AS-based reporting of results may impact its financial 
under INDAS, the incremental slippages of last three years, X of recovery expectations have to be written off from their net worth. So what are the triggers for revival? Well, in FI18, if you look at the overall CV sales, that was clocked in at 8.6 lakh units, surpassing the previous high of 8.1 lakh unit in FI12. So in the last four quarters also, CV sales have been pretty strong. You look at the growth from Q1 FI18 at minus 9%, it has moved up to above about 31% in Q4 FI18. So apart from that, what are the triggers for the company overall? The quarterly disbursement in Q4 was at 15,000 crore rupees. So the disbursement to AUM ratio, that is how much of disbursement goes into AUM and the repayment is at two year high of 35%. So if you analyze the disbursement of 15,000 crore, the, for FI19, that disbursement works out to about 60,500 crore. So if you take into account the disbursement to AUM ratio of 35%, it translates into an AUM growth of 22 to 23% for FI19. With the worst of asset quality woes behind the company, the management actually expects a 70 basis point decline in the credit cost. So while you factor in the uh, return on assets, if you uh, maintain FI19, at a statutory ratio of cost to income level, uh, the ROA can improve based on the fact that you know credit costs will decline. The demand will also be driven in their rural centers. If you look over the last one year, they have opened uh, 200 branches in the rural sector. Coming on to the brokerages, CLSA has a sell rating on the stock with a target price of 1,210, while Morgan Stanley has an overweight rating with a target price of 2,000 rupees. They also believe that they see an EP. CAGR of 52% over FI 18 to 20. Motilal Oswal has a buy recommendation on the stock with a target price of 1950 and they believe that the return ratios are just of cyclical ratio and the valuations are very good. If you look at the peer comparison in terms of valuation, you know, Shiran Transport is below 40 to 45% of the valuation that is being for Chola Mallam investment. So Chola Mallam is actually trading at 4.3 FI 19, while while Shiram Transport is trading at 2.3 times FI19. This is not a stock recommendation. And let's listen in what the management has to say about that growth. As of now, we are adequately capitalized uh, because uh, we have to maintain 15% uh, CRAR, uh, 10 plus 5, which uh, we are above that. Um, overall, uh, uh, CRAR at around 16.5 and the tire one is around 14.3 uh, so we are reasonably yes but if you are if you are planning for a big uh, uh, jump in the uh, what call lending for next couple of years we may have to look at uh, raising some equity which we will be taking call by the year end even though there was a uh, uh, pickup in the output the uh, basic consumption of the rural uh, did not go up first uh, in the previous year, in the 2016 is because of demonetization. But subsequent to that, people got adjusted and the, the cash is back and people are able to tra transact and trade. So there is a reasonable good pick in uh, consumption this year. We are planning to uh, grow at around 18 to 20 percent on AUM basis overall. Okay, I mean, uh, so that is Shriram Transport, 360-degree uh, uh, view plus management commentary, uh, brokerages uh, uh, pricing uh, the stock around 2,000 rupees, I mean, the target levels. By the way, there is a little bit of more pickup on the Nifty. Uh, so we're up about a quarter percent now and back at the day high. So things are pushing ahead. Let's see if it lasts. So it's a wrap here on this edition of Midcap Radar. Your stocks will take all the action forward.